As some of you may or may not know, there is this theory that's been floating around for years uh, which says that the old world civilizations such as Matsurim, otherwise known as Egypt, and Ashur, otherwise known as Assyria, were actually located in the New World, in North America. And that somehow there has been this big cover-up to deceive the world about its true geography. It's sad to see many of my own people falling for this nonsense, so let me briefly address it here in this video and kill it. Actually, the word murder would be more appropriate since that is what I'm about to do to this monkey's theory. You can murder this ignorance with just one verse from the Bible. But I'm going to use three scriptures. Three witnesses looked at from the grammatical standpoint that will allow me to commit a homicide that I won't have to go to jail for. So, let's begin. First scripture is Genesis 12 and 9. Okay, so let's deal with the grammar first, and then we'll do the translation. First word, wa yasai, from the root na, sa, and ra, which means to travel or to, to journey. The weak verb appears in the basic stem, in the third person, masculine, singular, in the imperfect, but it has a wa prefix, which flips the tense and turns it back to the perfect tense. Second word is abram proper noun, which is the subject of the verb. Third word is ha loch from the root ha, la, and cha. This is an infinitive absolute, which means going on or continuing to go. The fourth word, wa naso i. This is another infinitive absolute. The same root of this infinitive is uh, at the beginning of the sentence. This word is prefixed with a wa, which is simply the conjunction and. And the infinitive absolute means journeying. so I and journeying. Fifth word is ha nagaba. This is simply the noun nagab, which means south. It has a definite article prefix and a ha as the suffix as a directional. This word means towards the south. Towards the south. So the proper and literal translation of this verse would be and Abram journeyed continuing to go and journeying towards the south. So why is this important? This chapter of Genesis tells us how Abram and his family moved from their homeland to Haran, which is located on the eastern side of the Euphrates River. That's verses 1 to 4. In verses 5 to 8, we read how Abram left Haran and came to the land of Canaan, and journeyed to Beth Al, otherwise known as Bethel. What verse 9, however, is telling us is that 
he had been moving this whole time in a southward direction from Haran to Beth Al. And when he left Beth Al, he continued moving in the direction of south. In other words, Beth Al in the Holy Land is south of Haran. And that means the Holy Land is south of Haran. This conclusion is simply based on the grammar of Genesis 12 and 9. There is no way around this conclusion, no way at all. Now, if you look at this monkey's map, and I, I hate to be insulting, but I just can't help it. Whoever made this map was using crayons and Elmer's glue. They have the Mississippi River as the true location of the Euphrates River. They have Haran east of the river, which is true, it should be east. But the land of Canaan, which is the Holy Land, they have it on the western side of the continent. This map has the Holy Land west of Haran when it's supposed to be south of Haran. This is more than just a cut. This is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. If you are going to play these kinds of games with the biblical text and just ignore the grammar, ignore the source language, you really have no business trying to teach from it. Don't tell me you had a dream. I don't want to hear your dreams. I want to hear you break down the source language. If you can't do that and all you have is a dream and a 1611 Queen James version of the Bible, you are wasting everybody's time and you're simply out there just trying to mislead people. As I said, you could kill this monkey theory with just one verse, and I just did with one verse, but I'm going to use two more. Two more, and I'm going to wrap this up. Before I go to my second scripture, a quick word about the cardinal points east, west, north, and south. Whenever you come across people who actually believe this map, made by Patrick Starr, is factual, you very quickly realize the person you are talking to is not dealing with a full deck. Because they will actually say things like, north is really south, south is really north, east is really west, west is really east, and you can't trust the maps made by Europeans. Well, let me tell you what you can't trust. If you wake up in the morning, you face the direction of sunrise, that's east. Now turn your body to the left, 90 degrees, that's north. Now turn your body to the left, another 90 degrees, that's west opposite of east. Now turn your body to the left another 90 degrees, that's south, opposite of north. Now turn your body to the left another 90 degrees, you've made a full 360 degree turn and now you're back facing east where you started. Don't let these Patrick stars play you. You don't need anyone to tell you what directions are east, west, north, and south. The second scripture is from Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 to 4. What Yael Abram, Mamatrem Ho Washato Wahal Asharlo, Walot Ramo Hanagaba. What Abram, Chabad Maad, Bamakana, Ba Chasap, Waba Zab. What Yelach, Lamasa Eo, Managab, Wagad Beth Al, Rad Hamakom Ashar He, Sham Alo, Batachala, Ben Beth Al, Waben Hae. Almakom Hamazbach Ashar Rashasham Bara Ashana Wayakasham Abram Basham Yao. And Abram went up out of Matzraim, he, his wife, and everything he had, and lot with him towards the south. And Abram is very heavy in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south even until Beth Al, until the place which was there his tent at the beginning, between Beth Al and between Hai'e, to the place of the altar which he made there in the first. And Abram called there on the name Yao. Just to back up real quick, in chapter 12, we saw that Abram was journeying south from Haran to the Holy Land, and that once he got to Beth Al, he set up an altar where he called upon the name Yao. This is in verse 8 of chapter 12. Then verse 9 shows Abram leaving Beth Al and continuing to go further south into the southern part 
of the Holy Land. While he was there, verse 10 tells us there was a great famine, and Abram went down into Matram to live. And it came to pass, there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Matram to live there. For heavy is the famine in the land. There is not the slightest suggestion that Abram changed the course of his movement to a different direction. He was in the Nagab, which is the southern part of Canaan. Then the famine occurred, and he went down into Matram. He is still moving southward. So we know from this that ancient Matram is located south of the Holy Land. Now, when it came time for Abram to leave Matram, chapter 13 and verse 1 tells us that he went up into the Nagab, into the southern part of the Holy Land. To go up means to go northward. And this proves again that the southern part of Canaan is north of Matram. Verse 3 of chapter 13 tells us that Abram departed from the Nagab, from the southern part of the Holy Land, and returned to Beth Al. And verse 4 shows that he returned to the altar that he had built, and he called on the name Yao there once again. When you compare these details with the Patrick Star map, they don't fit. Although this map does show that Matsraim, or Mizraim as they choose to call it, which is the Jewish pronunciation, Matsraim is south of Canaan. But according to the details of Genesis chapter 12, Haran is supposed to be located north of Canaan. The Patrick Star map has Haran east of Canaan at opposite ends of the North American continent. This is not a finger cut. This is a decapitation of the head by the guillotine. Now for the third scripture and the final witness that will bring eternal death to the Patrick Star monkey map. We are going to be looking at Yeram Yao, otherwise known as Jeremiah, chapter 46 and verse 10. Che zabach laadene yao tzabaoth ba'aret sapon al nar parath. For a sacrifice unto the Lord Yao of hosts is in the land of the north to the river Euphrates. Che zabach laadene yao tzabaoth ba'aret sapon al nar parath. This chapter by the prophet Yeram Yao in the 6th century BC, before the destruction of the southern kingdom, was written by him when he was in the Holy Land. He was literally standing in the kingdom of Yaoda, otherwise known as Judah. This verse clearly states that the Euphrates River is located to the north of where he was standing when he wrote this chapter. The Euphrates River, according to this verse, is in the land north of of the Holy Land. If you look at the Patrick Star map, is the Euphrates River north of the land of Canaan? No. This monkey map has the Euphrates located to the south and east of Canaan. This map is a joke. Anyone taking it seriously needs to go back and redo high school, assuming they ever finished high school. Have Egyptian artifacts been found in America? Yes. Does that mean ancient Egypt was located in America? No. It just means that ancient Egyptians visited America in the past and left traces of their visit behind them. That's all it means. The New World is prophetic Matram and prophetic Ashur, meaning the Americas are the lands where the nation of Ya'o Sha'al would be shipped in order to be enslaved and to be punished. The Holy Land promised to Abram is located in the old world. Our people were shipped from the old world to the land of pyramids in the new world. Throw this Patrick Star monkey map away. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Spongebob!